Welcome to the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan, your host. What is Recalibrate Your Life? Well, I'm talking about making the necessary adjustments in your life, whether you're 20, 30, or 40 and beyond. We all need to make mid-course corrections or changes. So today, what we're going to talk about is how to make the strategic decisions in 2016 and beyond. And today I have with me Jay Nicole Willis, who is my guest. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Jay Nicole, can you explain to my audience who you are and what you do? Okay. I am a master cosmetologist and beauty coach and a boutique owner as well. So I enjoy the life of beauty. Um, I enjoy taking women from what they think they are to what they know that they can be. Awesome. Um, so whether it's hair, clothing, just speaking life, things of that nature, that's who I am. So it's all about education and training, yes, correct? Yes. In order to do that, they yes. need to exactly. have some level of education and exactly. training. So that's what yes. we're gonna talk about right. today. So let's get started. In your opinion, how important is it for someone to have a four-year degree? Well, you know, it, it depends on the person and what their goals are. I started out my career with probably just basic high school, a cosmetology license, and a few little trades and things of that nature. And I climbed the corporate ladder for about 10 years, even with doing administrative work outside of that, without having a four-year degree. It was something that was within me being a single mother that I decided I wanted my boys to see something that it can be done. I had the smarts for it. It's just that I didn't feel it was my time or maybe I was trying to make sure my children were taken care of at that moment, but it was something within me that eventually a four year degree for me became a goal. Mm -hmm. And so when I put my mind to it, I achieved the goal and I was able to become, you know, uh, a credential holder with a BA. Mm -hmm. So that for me, that, that goal became important because of my family. I've spoke, spoken to other people who feel like, okay, you know, I'm good. You know, I'm out here, I'm making things happen. I'm getting what I need and I don't even have a degree. That's good mm -hmm. for them. But to each his own basically is how you see yourself and how you want to be perceived. Me, family was very important to me so they know that, you know, against all obstacles, they can get it done. They can get it done, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, our parents, they stress education. Mm -hmm. They stress that traditional, right. you know, go get that four-year exactly. degree. But now there are so many other options out there. That's right. We have training. Yes. We have, uh, as you said, certification, mm -hmm. credentialing yes. in different types of yes. endeavors. Yes. Um, developing your skill set can come in different forms. That is correct. Would you agree? I agree. Um, because, you know, it, everyone learns differently. And so, you know, developing yourself may depend on what school you go to or what, you know, training center you go to. So you would have to look at that as a plus, you know, figuring out your niche, you know, and knowing who you are and knowing where route to go. A four-year degree may not be for somebody else. Maybe they just need a two-year degree or a vocational school mm -hmm. because that's they, how, how they are. And I learned that firsthand from my middle son. Now learning, now he in his 20s, now we are looking at vocational school versus a four-year college mm -hmm. because the way he processes things. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the person and, you know, and how they, um, you know, achieve things. You know, you don't want to stick someone in a four-year college and then they can't make it. Absolutely. So you have to reach a person where they're at. And, you know, we're now dealing with... Uh, an, an emerging global way of doing business right. now. Business isn't the way that it was before. So We're true. connected now to the internet. Exactly. So we can communicate. Exactly. We can do business in so many different types of formats mm -hmm. that don't really require that you spend that four year right. time exactly. in, in school. Right. How has business impacted you as a, or how has, uh, uh, your credentialing and your training impacted you to deal with a global market? Well, you know, now that I do have, you know, a degree behind me, there are some things that I'm more privy to than I probably would have been years ago. 
um, everything, yes, has evolved, evolved. But now I feel a little bit more tech savvy or because I did go to through computer information systems and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So now it's like I feel like I have that extra edge where some things that, you know, I would think when I first got on the computer, I was like, whoa, this is scary, mm -hmm. you know, versus today. Now it's just like just a whiz. And <laughs> my uh, boyfriend and I were just talking about how do you do this, this, that, and the other? And I'm like, okay, I figured out it from this way, but mm -hmm. I know I'm going to go figure it out from the other way. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with technology forever evolving, I'm looking at the train and it's like, Oftentimes I um, kid and I say, well, we go get the kids and we'll see what they know mm -hmm. and they'll train us. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So that's another way. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and with the millennials that are coming up yes. now, you know, they're more adept to, exactly. to learning it a lot more quicker than we yes. are, huh? You know, yes. Look, we're going to take our first break right. and we'll be back with the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan. Do you know that you're on the verge of something new? A fresh move is what I call it. Here are five ways that you can recognize it. Number one, forget the patterns of yesterday. They're irrelevant. Number two, refresh your eye browser. What do I mean by that? I want you to see life out of a whole new lens. Number three, expect the unexpected, or practice serendipity. Number four, stay in your lane. And when you do that, you can receive new blessings, new opportunities, new relationships, checks in the mail. It's possible. Number five, stay open. The Recalibrate Your Life show at 50 with Janice McMillan that's if you want to hear more tips and more information about how to stay in a new direction and focus. Welcome back. This is the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan, your host. I have with me today, Jay Nicole Willis, and we're talking about getting the knowledge you need to succeed in 2016 and beyond. Now, Jay Nicole, we were talking before the break about how important education is. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people out here that are looking at this broadcast and they're trying to make a decision on whether they should go to school or get training to help them succeed in their intended career path, what should they do? First of all, you know, having a goal in mind and what you want to achieve. Um, as a master cosmetology now, I'm going into an instructor school. So for me, my goal is to teach. Been in the business for 20 years now. So for me, I had to develop a plan on how I was going to achieve that. Yes, it does require going back into the classroom of like being in cosmetology school again, which is not a problem, so I can get the credits that I need so that I can be into someone's school or create my own school. Mm -hmm. So develop a plan that you want to achieve and then set yourself the goals to get that. Whether you're taking a credit at a time, you're taking an online course at a time, you're going into a vocational class or something like that to get towards it. But make sure you do your research on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that I have seen in some of you know, even my friends is that they say they're going to go to school, but they don't have a, a goal or end in mind. Mm -hmm. And they start off on the course and then they get frustrated, mm -hmm. you know, even at, you know, the mid 30 age or the early 40s and stuff that some of my friends are that are now going back to school. Mm -hmm. They didn't really develop a plan. And I think that's what a lot of people miss. It's nice to say, yeah, I got one, you know, but what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You know, so make sure that whatever you do is, is, is something that you're passionate about and something that you can see that maybe if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's something that's going to benefit 
your business. Um, it's something that's going to benefit your life. Um, you know, don't just go for a school just for the sake of school and say, I finished, mm -hmm. you know, make it mean something make it because mean a something. lot of times we do stuff and it doesn't mean a whole lot. And then it's just sitting over in the, in the corner collecting cobwebs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. make it mean something mm -hmm. because you work harder for something that means a lot. And you know, you make a great point. Uh, we are all born, I believe mm -hmm. with, uh, gifts, spiritual gifts, right? and we develop our talents, and our abilities. How necessary is it to develop those spiritual gifts, those natural abilities, and those natural talents? How important is it? I think it's very important. Uh, woe to the person that's out there just going in and winging it, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it is very important that a person develops those talents, whether they're natural, spiritual, however they may come, because you just don't want to be out there on the wing in a prayer, you know. Uh, even venturing out as you have, you know, with radio and TV, mm -hmm. I've sat and done the same thing as far as research to see how things look, how they flow. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go in with an open mind. I know this is the way I'm going to be the stylist from behind the chair, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. So my thing is like looking to see um, where exactly my my talent is, mm -hmm. my creativity flows, and you know, making sure it is the proper fit for me. But then I'll, then I come across to the next person that I have something to share with them. Mm -hmm. So developing your craft, your talent, that natural giving ability is very important because you know who wants to sit up and watch someone or hear someone or anything, and then they it's like they just talking around a mirror bush, <laughs> you know. So yes. I think it's very important. Or yeah. you just, you know, lack of days about it. Your passion, you know, and your and your talents and all them, I do believe, coincide with each other. Mm -hmm. So, again, be passionate about what you do because, therefore, as the word says, and your gift shall make room for you, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. for me, that's what I live by, that, you know, as more and more I strive, it's going to make room for me. And, I, and day by day, something different is happening. There's like, oh. So it fits there, you yes, know. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So for someone who's out there who they don't know what their gift is, they don't know what their natural bend mm -hmm. is, what is the first step that they need to do to get acquainted with what they have been God ordained to do? Um, my father and I you had this conversation similar and come to find out you know, what I think worked really well with some of us is that looking at something that you could do that you may not get paid doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can do it for free, you know, and know you're passionate about it and get the same caliber of service mm -hmm. if you were getting paid however many dollars for it, mm -hmm. cultivate that very same thing. Um, I used to be the girl used to sit on the stoop, braided everybody's hair. Yeah, you gave me some, you're not. It's just the fact that I know I did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that felt good to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a girlfriend that's a flight attendant. She says she don't make the world's greatest money, but being able to travel the world, she's mm -hmm. all right with it. Mm -hmm. So find something that you're passionate about. Find something that you know that if you couldn't get paid doing it, that you would still do it 120% well, you know, Absolutely. you know, not just giving it the okie doke or anything like that, yeah. that you will go above and beyond. And then from that, make the, find the necessary tools to help cultivate it. It's reading your word, mm -hmm. finding, you know, something, Google it, uh, whatever the case may be, talk mm -hmm. it over with friends. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a great thing is finding that accountability person. And if you can find that accountability person to run some ideas by, you will find that even that will advance your mind and thinking that you can deal, you can delve more into it and find out exactly who you are destined to be. Well, I'm just, I should have had a pen because I wanted to write this information <laughs> down. Good information. Thank you. We're going to take our next break. Right. And when we come back, we're going to talk about reinventing yourself. Right. We'll be right back with the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan. Do you know that you're on the verge of something new? A fresh move is what I call it. Here are five ways that you can recognize it. Number one, 
Forget the patterns of yesterday. They're irrelevant. Number two, refresh your eye browser. What do I mean by that? I want you to see life out of a whole new lens. Number three, expect the unexpected or practice serendipity. Number four, stay in your lane. And when you do that, you can receive new blessings, new opportunities, new relationships, checks in the mail. It's possible. Number five, stay open. The Recalibrate Your Life show at 50 with Janice McMillan. That's if you want to hear more tips and more information about how to stay in a new direction and focus. Hi, my name is Dr. Denise Johnson from the show Spiritual Principles for Emotional Healing. And as a mental health professional, people often ask me, well, how do you know when you should seek formal mental health treatment? And these are some ideas I have off the top of my head. Number one, we're looking to see if someone is suffering significantly emotionally for a period of two weeks or more. That might be sadness, it might be anxiety, it might be anger. If they're having that for that length of time, that's an indication that they might need to see someone. Another symptom that's really, really important is if there's a change in functioning that the person is experiencing. And that means they're not able to keep up with their normal responsibilities. So for example, a student can no longer study at school. A person who works no longer feels like going to work. Uh, a parent is having difficulty watching their children. That would be an important symptom. Also, you might see changes with appetite. You might see changes with sleeping. And also, if the person is having thoughts of hurting themselves or others, that's a very, very serious indicator. And that person needs to be taken to the emergency room immediately for a psychiatric screening. The only other thought that I have is that you really should have a very good medical evaluation first because sometimes medical illnesses or hormone imbalances or things of that nature have the ability to mimic or copy mental health symptoms. And you really wanna make sure that it's a real mental health problem and not a physical problem before you take someone for help. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Jewels Unveiled with Dr. Judith Fletcher. As many of you know, those of you that have followed me over the years, know that I had, over, I had gone through a devastating divorce. And during that time, my whole foundation felt shaken. And there were so many changes that was taking place in my life to the point I actually had a nervous breakdown. And so I would like to share a few tips with those of you that are faced with some of the same challenges today. One, I encourage you to remain calm. Face the fact that this is what has happened. It's not the end of the world. The sun will shine. You will find joy again. Process what has happened. If you find that it's difficult for you to be alone during this difficult time, I encourage you to find support through family, friends, your local ministry, whether you have a church home or you're a member of an organization at which you volunteer at. Spend time with others. It is so important to find that support to keep you encouraged during this difficult time. Third, assess what changes need to be made for your life, what direction you would like to go in. The final step I would encourage you to, to take is take time. Do not, I repeat, do not rush into a new relationship. Use this time to heal. Use this time to really get over the hurt, the pain, as well as the loss of this relationship. And prepare for the next step of your life, the next phase of your life. And finally, I encourage you to remain confident in knowing that this too shall pass. Thank you. Welcome back. 
This is the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan. Today's guest is Jay Nicole Willis, and we're talking about getting the knowledge you need for 2016 and beyond. Now, before the break, we were talking about reinventing. Now, there are many people who have been in traditional jobs for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. They're about to retire. They're about to go in a different direction. Let's talk about how important it is to reinvent yourself. You know, we talked a little bit about technology and how technology is forever evolving. And woe to the person who is stuck yeah. in maybe the 80s or something like that, trying mm -hmm. to get around in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very important that you do some form of reinventing yourself. You may not do something that would be drastic, but any improvement is a good improvement. You know, um, for uh, myself personally, I have done some changes. I have, you know, kind of reinvented myself to fit into the next caliber of clientele I wanted, where mm -hmm. it was changing my hair color, changing my style a little bit. So those type of things put me in a different, you know, position of people where they didn't see the fact that, you know, maybe I may be an older woman, but I'm still trendy, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So reinventing yourself could be a great attribute to yourself because if you're looking to uh, achieve something, whether it's in business, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in finances, you want to recalibrate your life in that format to even achieve those things. Mm -hmm. So why not reinvent yourself? Why not invest in you to get those things you want? You know, believe it, speak it, and own it is what I always say. Believe it, <laughs> speak it, and own it. Yes, <laughs> and just go for it. Yeah. That way you can, you know, become comfortable in the skin that you're in and the person that you're trying to become, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're trying to go somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that for that person who's trying to go somewhere, how are they going to be able to navigate in the future? Now, you, you see where we are right now mm -hmm. with technology and all types of global uh, introductions mm -hmm. that are happening. You know, Apple changes every two months, yes. okay? <laughs> so what happens to that person in the future who is not adaptable, who is not flexible and adaptable as it relates to training? You know, if they're not flexible and adaptable, then, you know, my thing is that they haven't discovered their passion. They haven't discovered their worth, you know, and what they were put here for. And that's sad, you know, if they don't know or want to try or just have given up on life, mm -hmm. you know. And I think people such as ourselves, if we spot that type of thing, I think that's something that we can find ourselves trying to be an encourager to that person to try to get with it, you know, mm -hmm. and coax them along a little bit and, you know, be that, you know, cheerleader for them or something. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people miss that and then they become stagnant and then it's just like, oh, well, you know, I was born and I died. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that person. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. nerdy, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. If it didn't work, I tried it. You know, that's Absolutely. how I feel. If yes. I, you know, I push for it and I may not got a good grade, but mm -hmm. I, I did it. Passed. Yes. <laughs> I, I put my hands and my feet to it, and yes. I worked it out to some degree. Exactly. 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 <laughs> now, you know, entrepreneurship is the thing now. Mm -hmm. You're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You're a business owner. Mm -hmm. Tell me how important it is for someone who may not go that traditional route. How important entrepreneurship could be to them if they choose that route? If they choose that route, it could be very beneficial. But again, I have to go back to making sure you're doing your passion. Okay. A lot of people start a business and really don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. And it's just that it look good and I can look like I can make a little money. You know, it's always some little gig with get rich quick scheme always coming up. And it's yes. somebody, have you tried this? Have you done this? Yes. It ain't for everybody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I know what type of salesman I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that person that, you know, is going to be always slamming stuff in your face or whatever. So it can work for some. But find your true niche, mm -hmm. you know, everything beauty for me, you know. If you want to know anything about a stiletto, you want to know anything about some hair, you want to know about an outfit, I got you, you know, but right. I probably won't be able to sell you any skinny tea. I probably <laughs> won't be able to <laughs> You know, or a shaper or, or whatever. Or a shaper or whatever, you know, that ain't my thing. Right, that's not what you're saying. Exactly. So <laughs> find your lane. Yes. You know, find your lane, 
build it, you know, transform it, the whole nine that it fits you. So you're comfortable. Always, it's always good for a person to have a good elevator speech, mm -hmm. you know. So woe to me trying to go out and do somebody else's speech, and that ain't me, yes. you know. Yes. So find your niche, build your brand, and you know, your brand is you. So build you so that when you're talking about whatever you're doing, you know it just like that. It just comes right off. And I think entrepreneurship is good for if you have that mindset. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you heard that. Find your niche. Build your brand so that you can succeed in 2016. Thank you, J. Nicole Willis, for being on my show today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you have to come back. Awesome. Time. This is the Recalibrate Your Life show with Janice McMillan. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.